compassion. Now right to achieve happy life. Right to overcome suffering. Good morning. So firstly, I want to express my appreciation, the organizer, uh, they headed by Tromdor Rinpoche. So I much, very much appreciate. At the beginning, I usually reasons the relevance of religion in modern time. I believe, and also uh, many uh, my friend is agree, there should be a secular way to bring peace of mind. But that. I will touch at public talk. Now, uh, respected mayors and uh, brothers and sisters, I am extremely happy to come to uh, Milano once more. And meeting with a long time, uh, some of the long time friends, and of course, many new friends. I think here one Muslim seems. <laughs> so I am very happy. And indeed, I very much appreciate the mayor's sort of welcome speech and you touched the importance of human value. I very much appreciate. My main concern is two things. Number one, promotion of human value. Number two, promotion of religious harmony. So in these two fields, I feel uh, public eventually can do in order to promote human value in human society. The beginning must start from individual. So firstly, uh, in order to get more comfortable, my eye I put this hat, so I need some permission from you. (laughs) 
Uh, Nonviolence is not just a mere absence of violence, but nonviolence is uh, that uh, there is sort of also this situation the violence you know, ready to I say happen, but then intentionally or deliberately risk in commitment of violence. So, uh, how to develop the restraint? You need determination, willpower. That willpower come through, I think, two factors. One factor, warm-heartedness, compassion. That's inner peace. One factor, holistic view. The compassion brings some kind of sort of sense of respect other. So violence harms other. Therefore, one aspect is warm-heartedness. Another holistic, even you involve violence, what use? It really solves your problem through violence. That's the thing. For narrow-mindedness, for narrow-minded, short-sighted, and particularly human mind, uh, dominated by emotions or human intelligence dominated by uh, destructive emotions and emotion become out of control then you can't see the reality simply you see you want to kill you want to do something so that's actually mad mind Through that way, you can't see the reality. So, all your method become unrealistic. So, unrealistic method bring disaster. Not only fail what you want, but also create a lot of other unexpected sort of consequences. So, therefore, uh, in order to sort of carry non-violent method, you need two things. Strong will, determination, based on compassion, warm-heartedness, and also the awareness of the fuller picture. Then uh, you determine violence is uh, unrealistic method, and particularly now, these days, in ancient time, people more or less remain as a day uh, isolated and more or less sort of independent. Now, today's world is everything interdependent. For example, the global economy, everything now interdependent. An environment issue, everything interdependent. And one family is alive, uh, related with the whole society. This society's future is very much related with other society. This nation's future related with the other nation. This continent's sort of future depends on the other continent. That's the reality. So under that circumstances, violence is foolish way, unrealistic way. So understand that, then you develop uh, sort of what's the determination, no matter what sort of difficulties 
I have to solve this problem through non-violent way. In order to achieve peace, long-lasting peace, that peace not through weapon, but through inner peace. So the sensible way to achieve peace is through inner peace. Usually disturbances in our mind mainly come from certain emotions, not external matters. For example, you surrounded by many hostile sort of things, hostility. But, you are, but if your mind still calm, then the external, even so-called enemy, cannot destroy your inner peace. So inner peace destroyed by our inner negative force. That is anger, hatred, fear, these things. So therefore, in order to achieve uh, world peace, firstly, we need inner disarmament. That means deliberately reduce anger, hatred, these things. And compassion brings us self-confidence, inner strength. So therefore, uh, through one way, try to increase our compassion. Another, deliberately, with sort of fuller knowledge or awareness, destructiveness of these negative emotions, then deliberately try to reduce. So that I, that some kind of inner disarmament. Then through inner disarmament, and eventually we must achieve external disarmament. Already the real threat of nuclear holocaust from Eastern Bloc, Western Bloc, that kind of thing, now already gone. With disappearance, disappearance of Berlin Wall, now that real threat, now also gone. It's a very, very good thing. Uh, and also, the talks, the limitation of nuclear weapons, wonderful. This is our first step. Uh, then, uh, step by step, uh, we have to uh, think to complete ban of nuclear weapon, complete elimination of nuclear weapon, then biological weapons, then offensive weapons. And eventually, our world should be demilitarized world. That's the external disarmament. Uh, such things as the people may feel these are just like green or unrealistic. But I think, I believe, uh, if we, uh, what's it, look our world more pessimistic way and doing nothing is our failure. Better to have some optimistic way, a certain some kind of visions. Then, of course, dream utilized world, my generation, my life will not see. But doesn't matter. Have some kind of vision. Then make effort and educate our younger generation 
give them hope, give them sort of certain visions. That's my feeling. So one of my uh, friend once he suggested to give me a suggestion uh, to achieve what is it a no longer war, one way, as I mentioned earlier, demilitarize. Another is unified force, like German Franco unified force. These are now today actually there. So that unified force is the best guarantee, no longer danger of conflict between these two nations. So we already have European Union. You Italy, also one important member of the European Union. So uh, eventually whole sort of member state of European Union try to create not only just economy zone, but also they try to create a unified force. Then that's the best guarantee. No longer any danger of military conflict between member states. Then there's the first regional basis, uh, Arab, Africa, uh, Latin America and Asia. I often you see expressing one day Indo-China or Sino-Indian unified force once materialized that that's the really uh, best guarantee of no danger of conflict on that huge continent as I really feel. So that also one sort of method to unified force. We should make this century uh, a century of dialogue, uh, a century of peace. Any problem, any conflict must solve through dialogue. That means through nonviolence. So our past century, 20th century, in reality, that century become century of bloodshed. Therefore, now this century, 21st century, although the beginning of the century, not a very healthy one, but we have to make every effort, including our prayer, this century should be century of dialogue. Oh. Now, <clears throat> now, I think here I want to deal with the religious harmony. Now, today, uh, we also receive seeing our. Uh, Conflict, some cases, involve religious faith. Look, Northern Ireland. Now, fortunately, things improving. But some time back, fighting. Although political issue, but eventually, name of religion involved. Protestant, Protestant, Catholic fighting. So, very unfortunate. Now today, I really happy one Muslim uh, spiritual brother here. Uh, now I'm a Muslim, Shia and Sunni, sometimes, they say, fighting. Killing. Very unfortunate. So in Sri Lanka, although again political, but then some cases 
some people get impression conflict between Hindu and Buddhist. These are really terrible. We really need special effort from time to time to promote religious harmony. It's very essential. Now, since September 11th event happened, I'm a Buddhist. I'm outsider of Islam. But now I voluntarily making sort of effort, making act as a defender of great Islam. So it is really, uh, many my Muslim brothers, uh, very few sisters. <laughs> so, uh, many Buddhist, many Muslim brother, you see, uh, explain to me if anyone who create bloodshed is essentially not Islam, not Muslim. And furthermore, you see, there are reasons they say a true Muslim, true follower of Islam, if uh, you should love towards entire creature as much as you are loved to Allah. Wonderful. All creature created by Allah. So if you really respect Allah, you must respect entire creature. You must love entire creature. So if you truly, you see, believe these things, if you truly implement, then wonderful. We really need constant effort to promote understanding among different traditions. Few months ago, I was in Lisbon. One interfaith service took in a mosque. It's the first time interfaith meeting in a mosque. The certain atmosphere, very wonderful atmosphere. And after interfaith meeting, we went to the main or city hall and meditation or silence meditation. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, I always uh, making effort to promote uh, religious harmony. In spite of different philosophy, some say there is God, some say no God. Big difference. Oh, it doesn't matter. Important is, what is the message? of God. What is the real sort of purpose of the theory of law of causality? Same. You should be a compassionate person. You don't practice killing, stealing, sex abuse, not telling lie. These things, same. Use different method, but same purpose. So we must look the sort of result, not the causes. If you, uh, when you go to a restaurant, and, and then the sensible thing is, enjoy it. All the different foods, enjoy it. That's the sensible thing. Rather, argument, this food's material come from that, this is something that, this is something, uh, this come from that, this come from that. Uh, this is senseless. Better to eat, better to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so like those the different religions, or different philosophy, instead of argue, oh, your philosophy is wrong, your philosophy is right, 
instead of that, well, simply, uh, be a compassionate, sensible person. That's the purpose of these religions. So there are common ground, common purpose, and different method really necessary according different mental disposition. So that's realistic. That's reality. So we have to adopt realistic approach or realistic view. So now I will touch a little bit about the inner peace. Now inner peace, as I mentioned earlier, they very much relate with compassion. Now here, all major religious tradition is it carry the same message, message of love, compassion, forg forgiveness, these things. To those people uh, who are, I say they, uh, who have religions and are serious and are sincere, then certainly one's own religion have, I say they, a great potential to further increase our compassion or warm-heartedness. Now to those non-believers who have no particular religious interest or even some hate religion, then uh, sometimes you see, the people who have no interest about religion, then they uh, also you see, no interest about compassion because they consider practice of compassion, uh, these things are religious matter. So that's absolutely wrong. Whether you uh, look religion or positive or negative, that's up to sorry, every individual. If you have no interest, doesn't matter. Okay. But there's no point to neglect about compassion. Why? We are, firstly, we come from our mother. Like human beings, other mammals, birds, who come from their mother and who survive entirely depend on others' care. Then by biological factor, there's certain emotion which bring together. That's an affection. That's a necessary. So these are biological factors. So my own case, my mother, very, very kind. So today, I have some amount of compassion. The seed, first seed, you see that, come from my mother, not from Buddhist teaching. And eventually, afterward, then I study Buddhism and practice Buddhism, so certainly, further sort of say, increased. But first seed come from my mother. So if uh, I haven't sort of have that kind of kind of mother or as if my parent abused me or sort of harms on me, then today I may find it difficult to practice compassion. So therefore, uh, seed of compassion is a biological factor because it need for survival. Very simple reason. And also proper growing, proper growth, right? proper growth. Again, affection is very essential. According scientists, according some scientists, you see, they experiment 
on monkey monkey baby some monkey baby separated from their mother some remain together so then they found those young monkey with mother always playful and very few occasion of fighting quarrel those monkey who separate from their mother always unhappy tense and often fighting so therefore uh, therefore they not only survival but also is a growth very much related with others care others affection so now medical scientist now these are our common sense or common experience now according modern science now medical scientist they found more practice of compassion result less stress anxiety more calm result better blood circulation and less blood pressure and they actually more compassionate person their immune system some cases even increasing constant anger hated actually eating our immune system so compassion and spirit of forgiveness these very helpful for our health so through that way our longevity where longevity also more calm mind more compassionate mind they are life long life longer so these are the material which we can teach people from kindergarten of course we everybody everywhere we see teaching health care these things so this should be include so so the proper promotion of human value compassion not through religious or teaching but through education is i think very important so modern education up to now not sufficient pay attention about the importance of warm heartedness so in modern education system i think we are lacking the special sort of pay attention about uh, importance of warm heartedness so we uh, some my friend even some ngos some universities is he carrying some or is it the research work how to introduce in modern education curriculum uh the or is it the so systematic sort of uh, information about importance of uh, warm heartedness so that i think very very important so that i call uh uh secular way to promote secular ethics so here i want to mention secular does not mean against religion some my friend is to consider the word secular means some kind of rejection or disrespect about religion that's not case when i say secular means according india india's constitution itself based on secular secularism and mahatma gandhi he very much believe secular secularism but he carry prayers from old traditions 
in daily some chanting some prayer so he is very much religious minded so the secular who believes secularism does not mean against religion certainly not so secular means no preference one particular religion respect all religions and including non believer so therefore uh, <clears throat> so therefore i think the secular sort of ethics should be there so secular ethics true secular way to promote mainly through education on the basis of common sense common experience and latest scientific findings <laughs>